One, did you know that iPhones you can like record like basically the the front of your can your phone now and my can oh. Hey guys, what's up? So it is a new week of the vlog. This is episode, uh, what would it be, 79 or 79, I believe. I have just spent the last about 30 minutes shooting a bunch of B-roll footage, and I am trying something different this week. I am trying to use my Canon Rebel T5i, and I'm using 60 frames per second instead of 120 frames per second, which I know it's not gonna be the same, but I just wanna see what it looks like with this camera. So, Insert probably some slow motion footage. If it doesn't look good, then it's gonna be like really short. If it's good, then it's gonna be pretty short as well. I'm just gonna be honest with you real quick. Uh, when I was filming this week's vlog, I wanted to do 60 frames per second to try the slow motion out. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks awful. Horrendous. Not usable, not gonna put you through it. I'm not gonna put myself trying to edit something I'm not gonna do that to myself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the slow motion footage that I normally shoot with my iPhone because that's what I primarily use to get all my slow motion footage. So here's some footage. All right, here's some uh, shots. <laughs> Alright guys, so what I want to do now is show you how I set my iPhone up to get this shot. It's super easy. Did you know you can basically screen record your iPhones now? It's a new app that was on like previous couple, like two or three uh, updates ago. But uh, so this is how you do it. You basically go into your camera and you go into your slow motion. And then what I'm doing is I'm zooming in or you find your object that you want to film a slow motion shot with. And I'm doing my feet and you hold the screen and you wait for the little yellow box to show up. And then on the left side, if you're looking at the screen, on the left side you're going to see a A, F, and an A, E. Basically that's auto exposure and auto focus so it picks the best, uh, it basically picks the best shot for you and then you just push record and that's it. Super easy, and I hope that's helpful for you guys. So I wanted to explain one last thing with you guys before we move on. So when I'm talking about 60 frames versus 120 frames per second, so when we're standard shooting on like a video camera, you can do 30 frames per second. So that means for every second you get 30 individual little pictures that equal up to a moving, a moving motion. So when you're doing slow motion, you basically times that by two or you can times that by three. Normally what you want to do is you times it by three so you get 120 frames per second so you have a lot more frames. So literally it means that you're getting these little frames that equal up a shot. You're getting 120 that equal up for one second versus what I was trying to do this week was basically for one second I'm getting 60 little individual little pictures, which doesn't equal up enough, basically enough footage to give you enough time where you can get a full understanding of what you're trying to shoot. When you're doing slow motion, what you want to do is you're trying to capture a fuller moment of an object. That is a little bit of filmmaking this week. Also, you can see I'm cutting between two different cameras. This is the other camera that I'm using. And I put it in the shot intentionally to show you guys, oh, intentionally or on purpose. I like showing like the back end of filmmaking and like what it does, what it takes to actually make a shot. So that's the reason why you see lights in the shot sometimes. That's the reason why you see other cameras in the shot sometimes. Just because I'm trying to show you guys what's up. So it is Sunday morning and I'm getting kind of a late start. Uh, so kind of where we're at. <laughs> so I believe the plan is I'm gonna go to Pittsburgh, Kansas today. It's about two hours away and my camera's falling over. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do today. Uh, they have a museum there. I'm gonna try to get there before it closes. So I am here in Pittsburgh, Kansas and 
Yeah, I'm outside the actual museum right now. I'm getting some B-roll footage. Funny story, so I was doing a little bit more research so I could tell you guys history about the museum. Well, I read an article that was published about three years ago saying that the museum actually closed down. So I don't know if it's open or not. If it's closed down, then I guess we'll have to find something else to do, won't we? So I think that they're open. Um, so yeah, Sunday. Um, I always, yeah, let me check this out. Is that okay if I film? Yeah, okay. um, could I get you to sign our registry, please? Of course. Hey guys, what is up? So we are here at the Crawford County Historical Museum in Pittsburgh, Kansas. It's just a museum that's basically dedicated to a lot of random like artifacts. Actually has the most artifacts in one museum in southeastern Kansas. Yeah, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour and I'll meet back with you guys and I'll give you more of a history lesson over this location. So let's start. So I should tell you a little bit of the history behind this museum. All right, so this museum is called the Crawford County Historical Museum, and it was founded in 1968. And it's located in Pittsburgh, Kansas. It's like the southeastern part of the state. I was about to put it. I'm like, hey, you should check out the state's like right here, and that's where it is. I guess I'll just show it to you. This is where this it's located. Why am I squinting? And this museum actually has the largest collection in the southeastern part of Kansas of historical displays, artifacts, and historical vehicles. I don't know if it was I don't know, that coming from the side seems kind of creepy, I don't know. But coming up like that would have been creepy too, so I don't know. And this museum actually has some trademark attractions, and these are them right here. They have all these cool hats. This two-headed calf. This Pepsi truck. All this World War II memorabilia. And typewriters. A mail truck that spells mail wrong. This rescue boat. And this fire truck. This big, giant fire truck. Two, two. So that's pretty much it, guys. There is an outside part, which I'll show you. But that's about it for this museum. That's where we're at. So I'll show you the outside and then we'll probably move on with our day. So these were the two buildings I was talking about outside. They're pretty much just replica buildings of old towns and old towns or how it used to be back in the old times. I don't know. See, a lot of Kansas, let me, okay, let me explain something to you. Okay, so let me explain. From all the research and all the towns I've been in through Kansas, what Kansas used to be was just like a wild west kind of feel prior to uh, civilization and the internet coming along. So a lot of little towns like this, and are not, they're not little towns, this, the city of Pittsburgh is like 20,000 people, I believe, but prior to like population booming and everything like that, a lot of these were small little western towns along the way to uh, the west coast. So, a lot of these towns try to, how many times do I have to say towns? But a lot of these places do like small replicas of what it used to look like prior to what it looks like now. I had a whole other tutorial thing that I wanted to talk to, I wanted to talk to you guys about, but I don't think I'm gonna talk to you about that until next episode. So I'm gonna end this vlog right here. So if you like this, uh, give it a thumbs up and also if you got this far thank you so very much and we've been killing it on subscribers guys thank you so much and that's it like comment subscribe I'll see you guys next week or I'll see you on the next episode <gasps> adios bye